I'm so glad that you decided to join me for the first class in the How to Collage series. If you haven't had a chance to watch the introductory video, I'll leave a link in the description box. Go ahead and take a look at that because it will give you an outline of all the things that you'll need in order to finish this class. Today we're going to be concentrating on class one and we're going to build Tenny Bird. And this is the art journal page that will fit in a traveler's notebook. He is four and a quarter wide and eight and three eighths tall. I do want to talk about a couple things, some housekeeping things, uh, before we get started building our image. As you cut out your pieces, I'd like to suggest that you keep them as intact as you can. Uh, for a couple of reasons. It makes it easier when you're looking through your sheets for your next three projects to look at them as a whole and be sure and try and keep the name of the kit so that they're easy to find. And by the end of this, so here's another one, I had to, I did cut that off, but um, if you have to do that just make sure you note it somewhere so you can figure out what the sheet is. But again, like this. Um, because by the end of this, you're going to have some really holy sheets because you're going to use all of or a lot of this. In addition to having those holy sheets, I would suggest, and because you're going to have those holy sheets, I would suggest that you find something to keep your papers in. If you have something that's uh, clear and plastic and you can you know, keep your stuff in there, that's great, or a file folder, but something you can keep everything together because these pages can get out of hand really quickly. And just like I suggested that you keep your cut pieces for each of your products, projects and something, I would suggest that you have a file folder or something for all of your papers. And one last thing before we get started is be sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of the video, all the way, because I have a little surprise for you. And finally, our last class, which will be class six, where I have put a bow on it, that's where everything's going to come together and we'll do all of the finishing touches. The extra pieces that I show you um, that you can make, we'll go through those. Um, any details, we'll touch on those also in class six. Um, and I would recommend that you keep your sheets free so that you work on the traveler notebook size paper so that eight and a quarter by eight and three eighths and keep them free like this. Don't, don't paste them into a traveler's notebook. Just work on them separately so that if in fact you decide you want to scan them to make some of the other projects, it's easy to do. Okay, so let's get started. One of my main goals of this class is to help you see what I see when I look at either collage sheets or magazines, coloring books, etc. When I look at images and how I can pull those into a collage. So when the idea for Tenny Bird came up, what I was looking for, I didn't know he was going to be a bird. I was just looking at the collage sheets for something that struck me, a couple of elements that really stood out that I could do something with. And so when I was looking at these, this bird's face was one of the first things that struck me that I really liked and thought I could do something with that. Um, the second thing that struck me is I liked these legs and I liked the tennis shoes. I liked these tennis shoes and so I was trying to think okay if I put his head and I use those shoes. This is a very short leg, as you can see there. It's not very long. Well, to put <clears throat> a skirt or something on that, it doesn't leave me much room. And so I was thinking that pants or something like that would, would look better because of the amount of leg that's showing. So I looked through here. Of course, I didn't find any pants. So I saw this piece and I'm not really sure what it was intended for, but I looked at it and I thought that maybe would make good pants. If I cut them in half, it would be a straight kind of a stovepipe leg and it would fit perfectly under those, those legs and feet. 
So what I did, the very first thing I did was I cut this out and then I could just sort of hold it under here and see, does that work? Yep, it looks like it would work just fine. So now I had three elements. I had the head, I had the feet, and I had the pants. So I needed some kind of a top. And I didn't really want something like this because the bird's head would just sort of sit on top of it. So I decided I wanted something that would go around the bird's head. And I saw this piece and thought, if I cut this out, then it will work perfectly with the bird's head. And again, I had cut out the bird's head and put it here and thought that will work perfectly. And then after I had this and I had the pants cut, it wasn't a very smooth transition from this piece to this piece. And so that's where I came up with this and thought I could use it as a little skirt. I could have done this as well. And it's just a matter of auditioning pieces. And when, you know, I mentioned to you before that I keep mine in plastic bags that have, you know, body parts and have miscellaneous. Well, that's the way to go because you can just pull pieces out and try them. We can't do that in this case because we're going to be using these collage sheets for a number of uh, different projects. And if, if you cut them all up, then they'll be hard to find. So if you do something like that in the future, it makes it a little easier. It's easy to audition things and just hold them up there. So anyway, that's where I came up with that skirt idea. And then everything was pretty much there. The egg was just an afterthought, just something I wanted to put on the front. And you will see that this head is slimmer than the original head. And that's because I wanted it to fit nicely. I wanted it to fit nicely in that collar. And we'll see that in just a second. But that was my thought behind this um, collage piece. So generally it'll just start, you'll see one something. Just it could be the head, it can body, it, body or legs. That will be your jumping off point to start looking and building from there. So we'll go through this as we go through the next five classes after this one, and you'll, you'll get a better sense. One other thing I want to mention is about the borders. Now, the, these borders, any of them will work around these pieces. They all just go together and look great. And there is no rhyme or reason to how I picked the borders. Um, and this one in particular, I wanted to just have some black and white because of the black and white in the pants. And then everything else just was whatever piece was close by. So you can see um, this was the black and white piece. So I found this and I just left the whole thing intact because it was perfect. I needed something for Tenny's feet to be on. So that was perfect. And then um, I just looked through the sheets and found something that I liked, which is when I came up with, with that piece. So. It's really, that is definitely preference. Whatever you think you might like there, um, that's, that's what you go ahead and use. So here, here it is, that piece. And I just keep my borders in a bag. And again, you can do this once, once we're not trying to get four pages out of one collage sheet where I have to show you which ones to cut out. Um, you can just build it however you like. So. If you don't like these borders, you can pick other borders and just place them around there. I just did it on this side and this side uh, because that's all I needed for that, what I thought I needed for that page. So, okay, let's go get started. So here's what I do when I cut out my collage pieces. I do some rough cuts. So I go after the piece that I'm looking for, and I keep my collage sheet as intact as possible. And this is when you would put this in something that you're holding it, you know, holding on to. Um, so, and then, then, when you go to cut your pieces out, you just cut right along the edges. And again, moving your paper, not your scissors and just go right along those edges. 
And sometimes if you're having trouble, you can tilt your scissors in or out to get a little closer. But really, you just want to just get right along there. And if it's not exact, it, don't worry about it. It's really not going to matter. You're not going to notice it. Okay, so you're going to do all your pieces like that. And then we'll start doing the fun part of assembling everything. And you'll notice on the shoes, I sort of changed the color of them. You don't have to do that, of course. But I wanted to really make them stand out. So there's the feet like that. And you'll see when we put it together, I ended up cutting these apart so that they would fit on the legs. Okay, so let's, um, let's finish up cutting and we'll be, I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so I've got everything cut out. I've got it in my little container here. And you want to take your bone folder. Go ahead and just dump them out. Uh, take your bone folder and let's just get those done so that the pieces will lie flat. So take it like this and just pull it. And it's going to round it a little bit. And you have to be gentle on some of the little pieces. So we want to do that on all of the pieces so that we're ready to go when we start assembling this. Now, I designed this using the pieces here for the Traveler's Size Notebook. And I would suggest that you follow along with the exact dimensions until you feel comfortable venturing out on your own. Um, so everything I'm telling you will fit this size, which is uh, four and a quarter by eight and three eighths. Okay. So there we go. So here is my piece. This is my base piece. And what I do is kind of a dry layout to make sure it fits. So here is that corner piece. It will go down there like that. And I always start with my borders first. Whether you're going to put them on all four sides or just a couple sides, start with your border first. And so here is how my border is there. So I'm going to just put that right there. And as you can see, I cut this off a little bit. So I just put it on a little diagonal and let it overlap. You can leave it just like that too if you'd like. Okay, and then we've got the skirt that's going to go about there. Now here we're going to start doing the assembly. And you'll see how we fit this all together. And there's the body. And my two arms, and this just helps me make sure that I've got all of the pieces. And right now I'm not going to put the house because that's an op optional kit, so I'll leave, <laughs> come on, I'll leave that off for right now. There's that, and there's the arm. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces. So let's get started assembling them. So I'm going to just scoot these off to the side like this and go ahead and use my glue, my glue stick. And you want to make sure that you've got a generous amount of glue stick on your pieces. And sometimes it's easy, if you have a non-stick worksheet, you could just build right on that as well. So I'm just going to put this down in the corner and against the edge. And see, it covers up that white edge if your printer does that. And again, you want to take your burnishing cloth and just make sure that's down. Okay, take your next piece. And again, put this at the top. And on this particular piece, I only decided to go with, and I'm just going to just lay it down just like that. I only decided to go with two edges of border. It's just a personal preference, whatever you like. But again, the whole idea of this is to get you comfortable starting to put pieces together and give you the initial idea of, oh, that's how I can use that piece rather than its intended use. The next thing we're going to do 
is the pants. So you can see this is what I used. I'm not even exactly sure what it was intended for, but I'm going to cut it straight up the middle. So just, just straight like that. It doesn't have to be totally exact. Just cut that straight up the middle and you can see there's your legs now. And I'm going to cut my legs apart here. Just snip them apart and they will fit right under those pants. See, just like, just like that. So all you need to do is just put a little of glue right on the top. Probably not best to really glue on that. Keep it on your sheet. Just a little bit right above the ankle and lay your pants right on top of that. Get your other pair. Now you can see on this one, I sort of kicked up her heel a little bit, just sort of kicked it up. So again, just like that, you can make it as much or as little as you think you might like. Put a little glue there on the ankle. Whoops. I think I'll kick her up like that. And you can see that I have, maybe you can't even see, there's just a little bit of overhang there. And all I would do is just trim that off a little bit. Okay, so the legs are done. Now, the next thing I would do is put together her legs along with this skirt. So you can see I have about an inch there. And it would look just like that. So in order to do that, I'm going to make the legs about like that. Just put a little glue. You don't want to glue everything down yet because you, you're sort of dry fitting but tacking more than anything. Okay, so you see how that's you've built that first part of it. Okay, let's talk about the head. So this head has a piece in here of the throat or the chest maybe that I cut away because I wanted it to be slimmer to fit into that body. So I just go ahead and just follow that line of the brown and then go through to the beak. And then you end up with the piece that's like that. Okay, now on this body, I didn't stick it right there. I stuck it behind here. So you have to end up cutting off that neck. And you cut right along, just along that neckline. And you can be a little generous with that because you have a, a little wider piece. And then I lay it right behind there, just like that. So you figure out, you know, exactly how you how high you want it, how low. I have it so it just barely clears. And this is where your scotch tape can help. I flip it over when I find something that I like, because it's just a little tiny piece to glue. I cut a pe just a small piece of scotch tape. And I'll look at it again to make sure I've got it where I want it. Turn it over. And then just put that little piece of tape there and it holds it. Okay, so now you can see we're starting to build this together pretty nicely. Just like that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is attach the arms. And what I did here was I ended up right in this area and right, he right here on her arms. I cut that away so it was clear. So you could see it right there and there. So go ahead. You can just do it with your scissors. Just go <laughs> into that armpit and just kind of free up that arm. And then you want to do it the same thing on this side. Go into the armpit, <laughs> cut in along that side. So now you've got free pieces here. 
and it just allows it, just looks a little better, I think. Okay, and that'll go right behind there. Now, on the arms, you have to sort of play with these a little bit till you get them to a point that you like. Now, what I did on here was I came down with the arms and laid it right on the shoulder where I liked it and where this would look good. And then I'll end up cutting away what I don't like or don't need. So you can use your tape runner if you like or just tack a little bit of glue stick down on the back of this piece because this is the one we know where we want it to go and just lay it down on top of there. And Let's go ahead while we're at it let's do the other side. And so here there's a little gap just a little tiny gap right there. I can put this over that if I want, but what I think I'll do is just leave that little gap and fill it in with colored pencil. I believe that's what I did when I made it the first time. So again, we're going to just put a little bit of glue, tacking it, and just lay it on there. Okay, and there's her arms, and we have some areas that are sticking out. Um, in this particular case it's easier to see it from this side. Just go ahead and cut that away and then we're going to glue glue the arm down. So we'll glue it to this and then you want to cut away the rest of the arm that you don't need. Just like that. Okay, same thing on this one. Put it on this piece. So again, you just have to tack it because we'll glue it down. And then we're going to go ahead and just follow this, the arm we want to keep. And everything else in there, there's a little piece right here that I need to cut off. Okay, so now we've got the body, really. And all we have to do is go ahead and attach this. So again, I just do a little bit of glue here just to tack it. And this all comes down to height and how tall and how long your piece is, how you want it to come up here, if you need to leave room for anything. And then I, when I tacked this down, I put her arms in front of her skirt when I went to finally it. We have one last thing, which is, if you want to put this on there, this is just an extra piece just to make it fun. Go ahead and just place that right in the center. And your piece is done. All you would do is just turn this over and glue it down. I have a little piece hanging here that I didn't get out. Okay. So the way I would do that is I just do make sure your glue stick is up and just gently put glue on your pieces. Being careful that you don't rip anything because you're dealing with some fairly small images. Go ahead and lay it down exactly where you think you want it. one about there and her arms wherever you think you'd want because you have a little bit of play time on that and burnish it down so you have good adhesion and then if you have anything that comes up you can just go ahead and glue it use your glue stick and just tack it back down now if you were going to use um, the peaceful dwelling, you would cut out the house and place it right here along with that roof. And then you can see that the sun is not the full piece. And what you want to do is save that piece that you cut off because we're going to use that in another, another um, project. So cut out that sun, save the piece, 
and then you just add these little rays that are in the kit and you are done. So look what you did. You created your first collage piece that looks cool and after you get everything done then you can do any sort of embellishment that you want to do. So if you go ahead and add those houses you can do that. You can see the other thing that I did here was right along here and across here before I even put these on because I didn't know I was going to do that at the time. I added just a little checkerboard border just because I thought I needed something and it's really easy to do. So I like to use the Micron pens because they're nice and small. So um, this is a Micron O2 and it works pretty well. And I'll show you how I create my borders. I just draw a line. My pen's a little faint here. I draw a line, kind of make it a little wavy, just a little bit wavy. And then I draw another line that crosses over it that's wavy. However much or however little that you want. And then that's where I do my checkerboard. So I just start filling it in. And, and it's a little tedious, but oh so worth it. Just fill those in. You don't really have to be too exact. And that's how you make that border. Just like that. So I'm doing it really fast, but, but you get the idea. And I would do this before, if you're going to go ahead and put your house on, uh, I would do this first. So we've got all our pieces glued down now and we just want to start putting on some of the finishing touches. So you know that I always use the Prisma color pencils, pencils to enhance the color. But I also have some colored pencils from Crayola which are very affordable and you get a lot of colors. So I'm going to use those to enhance the color. That way, if you don't have Prisma and maybe you have the opportunity to find Crayola pencils, you can use those. So I picked two colors. Um, this is golden yellow and red orange to enhance the tennis shoes here. So basically all I do is just color those in and again, um, light layers instead of just bearing down and you'll see uh, Follow Your Bliss is on those tennis shoes and this sort of covers that up. So just light layers like that and then the yellow goes right, uh, right over that front section. And I would probably come back and put a little bit more on here. But this is already turning into a very long video and I want you guys to be able to go play. Okay, the other things that I do when I'm enhancing the color is the things that I really want to stand out. And in this case, it's that bird's head. I really want it to stand out. So I always focus effort on the eyes. And whatever color you want, uh, let's see, I think I have, uh, let's go with a, a really, no, I'm going to go with green kind of a turquoise. So this is turquoise. <laughs> and I just color in the eye like that. Again, lots of lots of layers. I will use my um, a Sharpie, Faber-Castell, or a Micron, whatever you have, to go in and, and just go over that pupil. So you just really want to darken it up. And the number one thing is you want to put the white dot for on the eye. That really makes it stand out. Um, I'm using a Uniball Signo Broad in white. You could use white paint and just dip a pencil into the paint and dot it on the eye if you don't have this. If you have a Sharpie, a white Sharpie, that will work too. But you just want to go in there and you just put a dot on that eye. It's, you want to make it round and it makes 
just all the difference in the world. I would also pay attention to that beak and enhance those blues. Again, just color them in. This one is blue. <laughs> Boy, they were innovative in the names. And you just kind of go over. I, I just frequently kind of use the colors that are there to just enhance. This one is called Cerulean. And again, just lightly in a circular motion. See how that just makes a little bit of a difference? And then, if you remember, we were going to fill in right here. I didn't do a very good job of getting that arm on there. And if that happens to you, just come back with your colored pencils. See? You can't even, you can't even tell now. The other things you can do if you like is, this one's a bold here, I'm going to use my micron again, and just go, by, go around the eye and kind of highlight it if it's black. It'll just help make it stand out. And I see some yellow here, and I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow there, and a little bit in the eye, and a little bit right here. And it just makes a difference on this. I see a little bit on that throat. I'm just going to put a little bit there. And that's it. Okay, the last thing I want to show you are the pieces that you're going to need for the next page. And if you remember, the next one we're going to do is Rosebud. So go ahead, let me show you the, the uh, claw sheets that you'll need, the pieces on those. And you can stop the video so that you can circle your pieces and get them cut out. For Rosebud, I used the paper from Follow Your Bliss. It looks like this. I cut it in half just like I did previously, just straight down here. And I used this side of it, not this side with the black, but this side. Uh, for this, we're going to need Positive Changes Collage Sheet. You're going to need this piece, and that's what goes on top of her head. Positive changes, you're going to need this flower, which is right here, and this face, that half face, which is right here. Positive changes, you're going to need this piece, and it is going to become these wings, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. But you can just do a rough cutout of this. Don't cut it directly, just do a rough cutout of that. Positive changes, we're going to need this piece, which is this part of her dress, so that piece. Here's the wings. I don't want you to cut them out, but I want you to trace one of these. So just go ahead and trace one. That's all you have to do. And then we will, I'll show you how to cut these out of that piece. Uh, this one. It's just big enough to get two wings out of it. Okay, so trace those wings. And you're going to cut out this border and this border and this small checker board border, <laughs> that is her neck. Uh, follow your bliss, you're going to need these two arms and this border piece. Follow your bliss, you're going to need just this little bit of a border piece and this is this leg, so that piece right there. Follow your bliss and you're going to need this, that's her other leg, and this border piece right along there. And then these eyes, those are her eyes right there. And that's it. Okay, so those are the pieces that you're going to need, and 
this will be the, the project that we make um, on the next video, class two. I hope to not have these videos be quite so long. It just takes a little bit of time in the beginning as we start learning the principles of this. And then hopefully it'll be a little bit shorter for the next ones. So hope you're having fun. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I will get right back to you. And I'll see you on the next video for class two. It's recess, go play.